Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at what happens to surface area and volume when you change a linear dimension. When we say linear dimension, we mean something like a radius or a height or a side length or thing, something like that. And you'll find out that it changes surface area and volume in kind of interesting ways. So let's take a look. Number one. So here we have a small blue sphere and a larger red sphere. The large red sphere has a radius that is twice as big. So if you double the radius of a sphere, how much does the volume change? Well, there are a couple different ways to go about this problem. Let me show you literally how to calculate two different volumes. Let's, let's say the radius of this one is, I don't know, two centimeters, which means the radius of this one would be double, so four centimeters. So let's find the blue volume for it. first. It's 4 thirds times pi times r to the third power. So that would be 4 thirds times pi times 8. So we're talking 32 pi over 3. So about 33.51. All right, the red one has a volume that's 4 thirds pi times 4 to the third power. So that comes out to be, let's see, 4 thirds pi times 4 to the third is about 268.083, roughly. So as you can see, if you double the radius of a sphere, the volume doesn't double. This would be about, if it did double, this would of course be about 67. But it doesn't work that way. It grows sort of disproportionately, which is kind of an interesting thing. And uh, so you can continue to kind of pick numbers like that and, and see what happens. Um, or you can use a little shortcut, which I'll show you. But to get at that shortcut, let's take a look at this. What happens when you compare, when you literally make a ratio of these two volumes? All right, these are, these are volumes that we can divide pretty easily. So what I'm doing right now is I'm dividing 268.083 by 33.51. And I'm using the exact values, which maybe I'll, I'll pull up my calculator here and I'll show you. Uh, I'm using the exact values and I get 8 over 1. All right, so the ratio between volumes is 8 to 1. In other words, the red volume is bigger by, you know, it gets multiplied by 8. It's bigger by sort of a factor of 8. It's huge. All right, and the way that you can calculate that is we go 4 thirds. So let me go back and put a, let me open a, a new parenthesis here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all in my calculator all at once. I'll show you how to do it. 4 thirds times pi times 4 to the third power. Close the parenthesis. Divided by, open parenthesis, 4 thirds. And I might be putting in more parentheses than I need to, but it's kind of a habit, I guess. Uh, the other radius was 2. So I'll go... 4 thirds times, let's see, 2 to the third power. And I'll close that parenthesis. So if you do it like that, your calculator gives you a nice ratio. If you don't do it, if you literally just type in these decimals, you're not going to get exactly 8. But anyway, what that tells you is that if you double the radius of a sphere, the volume doesn't double, but it goes up by 8 times, which is kind of interesting. Number two, if you quadruple the sides of a cube, how much does the surface area change? So again, you can do that whole picking numbers thing and, and do it that way and compare them. Or you can just use this little shortcut that I'm about to show you. Here's the shortcut. We want to take our highlighter and we want to say, all right, quadruple side. What kind of shape is it? It's a cube. And what are we trying to determine 
surface area. So I highlight those four things. And then I write down the surface area of a cube formula. That's 6 times s squared. And watch this. We take the this word right here that tells us how much the side is changing. It's changing by 4 times. Quadruple means 4 times. So I'm going to simply put 4 in for s. This is the same as if this were 1 and this were 4. All right, so we're going to compare them like that. And whatever the formula tells us to do to the side is going to be our final answer. Notice the 6, we can kind of get rid of the 6. We don't really need the 6 because that's something that we would call a constant from cube to cube. So the shortcut, if you're using the shortcut with me here, the shortcut is just going to use whatever happens to that 4, which is squared, so 4 squared is 16. The surface area increases by a factor of 16. In other words, the green surface area is 16 times bigger than the yellow surface area, which is kind of interesting. So use that little trick there. Again, the 6 kind of disappears because it's constant from cube to cube. Number 3. If you triple the base, I'll get my highlighter back out here. If you triple the base of what kind of shape? Is it a triangle? But keep the height the same. How much does the area change? So this is just a two-dimensional thing. I'm going to write down the area of a triangle. It's 1 half base times height. The height stays the same, so that's a constant. We can forget about it. The one half, of course, changes, so that, or excuse me, the one half is constant, so that's something we can forget about. The height stays the same, so we can forget about it, but we're just focusing on, in on that B. The B gets tripled, so we put a 3 there. There's no exponent, really. There's an exponent of 1 on it, so it doesn't really change it. So the answer is, how much does the area change? It changes by 3 times. Let me, let me write it this way. It is... Uh, it is three times bigger. All right, so that one did kind of change proportionally to the side that we changed here. All right, again, you can pick numbers here. You can say this is one and this is one. This is one and this is three. All right, the base gets tripled. The height stays the same. We'll assume that these are right triangles. Find the area of both and you'll find out that the blue area is three times bigger. With cones we have the height of a cone is eight times bigger, the radius is the same. How much does the volume change? So here we go, volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times h. We're going to take h and replace it with an eight. H and 8. All the other stuff is constant from cone to cone, so we forget about it. The answer is 8 times. The volume is 8 times bigger. And you can check that to confirm, number 5. Here we have, let's see, two cylinders. If you multiply the radius of a cylinder by 7 and keep the height the same. By what factor does the volume increase? All right, volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Uh, the height stays the same, so we can forget about it. Pi, of course, is a constant. We can forget about it. Radius, 7. Take radius and put a 7 right there. This time the formula calls for the 7 to be squared, so your answer is 49 times bigger. By what factor does the volume increase? Uh, increases by a factor of 49. And again, if you feel like testing this, go for it. Just maybe call this radius. You can even pick bigger numbers. You can call this a radius of 3, which means this radius is 7 times bigger, or 21. The height stays the same. Maybe that's 5, and this is 5. Find their volumes and divide them, and you, you will see that the ratio is 49. Maybe I'll do that one really quickly on my calculator. 
I'll find the volume for both of these and compare them for us. So let's do uh, let's do the big cylinder, which has a radius of 21, height of 5. So here we go. I'm going to go parentheses pi times radius squared times the height close parentheses divided by open parentheses I'm going to divide that by the smaller cylinder the smaller cylinder has a radius of 3 and a height of 5 so I'm just picking numbers here just to kinda of make some sense of this in more of a concrete way I should get 49 here and I do that's good so there you go there's a shortcut to uh, work with changing linear dimensions